July seems to struggle with birthdays or business birthdays. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Um, Go nine months backward. What's going on nine? Because that's July babies. Uh, so this would be the seventh. Would it be Thanksgiving? Would be early no, it would be early November. Yeah, I guess people don't. Well, who knows? <laughs> it's just a thought. It's, yeah. You know. Yeah, it's it's funny to know what goes what went on around them because there's sometimes we we've got a, an embarrassment of riches for business birthdays, but the last two or three weeks in July have been a little tough. This one I found though, um, guy's name is uh, Eli Alman Colbertson or Eli Colbertson, born, born July twenty second, eighteen ninety one. He died at sixty four years old in nineteen fifty five. He was an American contract bridge entrepreneur and personality, very dominant during the thirties. He played a major role in the popularization of the bridge, of bridge games, and was widely, widely regarded as the man who made contract bridge. He also wrote a number of books. Uh, he was a great showman. They said he became rich, and this is how he earned his living. He had a very rich and uh, extravagant life and uh, lost and gained fortune, uh, fortune several times over by just gambling and, and doing these bridge tournaments. He was born in Romania to an American mining engineer. He attended the Sorbonne in Paris. He, they said he had a great facility for languages. He spoke Russian, English, French, German, Czech, and Spanish fluently. Whoa, 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 whoa. Russian? English, mm -hmm. French, German, Czech, and Spanish. He spoke fluently. Seven, six, six he, languages. Right. He had a reading knowledge of an additional five. Jeez. And he also had knowledge of Latin and classical Greek. And they said, despite of his, him having a great education, he really wasn't, and I had to look this up, you probably know what it means, an autodidact. Autodidact. You know what that is? I think that just... I know you're a pretty good SAT guy. Uh, didact, yeah, auto... I, I think that means, like, almost photographic memory, or he was a really great student or something, but... Um, we said he was self-taught. Yeah. That despite having a great education, he really taught himself a lot of these languages. So I just thought that was, that's a pretty, pretty aggressive to, to know that many languages and be competent in another seven. And to I read is, is another five or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. So when he, he lived in, uh, in Paris and, and for four years after the Russian Re Revolution, they said that in 1921, he moved to the United States and he earned his living from winnings at bridge and poker. And I, I, to me, bridge has always fascinated me, and that's kind of why I pulled this. It goes on and on about the different types of bridge. I know nothing about bridge, and but apparently in the in the twenties and thirties, forties, bridge was a huge thing. And if you watch some of the old sitcoms, they're always getting together for bridge. You know, I love Lucy. They're going to play bridge. Um, well, bridge is a pairs I, game. It's very points right. based, and you have to keep track of all the face and and numbers right like it there is a lot of thought that goes into playing bridge am i right is there a strategy too oh yeah no it's, it's thought strategy skill i've never played have you nope, ever played it at all. or tried to play it i'm showing the picture now that I, you provided of the book that he did for penguin contract bridge and i guess right. there's a picture of him getting ready to set sail on um a, a voyage and that's his wife with him yeah he was married and then he divorced she kept his name she was also a great bridge player as well and this is where it got into the weeds. He did contract bridge. She did auction bridge. It's different ways of counting points. And then there's rubbers and other things that are terminology that uh, that the bridge players have. But I, I had a lot of friends in college. My grandparents always played different types of card games, and we would visit them in Canada. We'd play with them. And I had a lot of friends in college that played different sorts of card games. I never never really got involved. They used to play something called Euchre. Yeah, I've heard of that. that? Those, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm with you. Uh, backgammon, chess, a couple other games, but the card stuff, yep. uh, nah, I kind of didn't, I took a pass. So, so aside from him and then kind of a sidebar, aside from him having, um, being such a prolific bridge player and, and known for that, he owned the very first firm of playing card manufacturers to develop the plastic cards, the cards that had the coating on them. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, he also developed and owned a chain of bridge schools where <laughs> it would teach people to be qualified to have bridge tournaments. Can you imagine yeah. now? That's that's right, right up there with the typewriter store now, yep. right? Going to go out of business. And uh, he wrote a book. One of the last things he did is he wrote a book, which I thought was would be interesting to read now. It was written in 1943. It was called We Must Fight Russia. I'm sorry, 1947. We Must Fight Russia. And uh, it was about all of his knowledge of Russia and uh in world peace and how Russia was a problem. 
<laughs> so here we are. Tonight. That was 1947. It's still apparently a problem. So on the heels of uh, the successful conclusion of World War II for the Allies, he was actually advocating right. go after Russia. Go after now, Russia. Yeah. And isn't it, that an interesting yeah, he, he political about... position to take, knowing what we now know? <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, he. what happened was he lost his the last tournament he played. He lost in 1938 and he was done. He never played again because he used to win everything. And the first time he lost a major tournament, he didn't play again. He wrote two books, one called Total Peace, which was published in 1943. And the other one, We Must Fight Russia in 47. I thought it'd be interesting to uh, to at least see what that said. I bet it would probably shine some light on a lot of things. So. I wonder if happy birthday to Eli. It's Culberson. a great birthday. And I wonder if, um, if you could find a copy of it, would you read it? We must fight Russia. You know, I'd probably skim through it. I'd skim through it. It'd be interesting to see what he said. I mean, a, a lot of things, history re- tends to repeat itself. Oh, right? he'd probably look for and if, give you specific reasons why as a, as a democracy, we should have done that at the end of world war two. He's not the only one. I wasn't it like, a couple of generals, Patton may even have been one of them. It's like, okay, let's push through because these folks. <laughs> yeah, we we took care of, we took care of Germany and Japan. Now let's let's. And I know Russia was on your side for a while, but let's take care mm-hmm. of it. Yeah, no, that was yeah, that was uh, that was advocated. Right? Oh yeah, yeah, that came up a lot. Excellent business birthday.